We are taking a look at the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus in our review today. How does it compare with the recently released Ambonic RG505 which has the same processor? Keep watching for the unboxing, benchmarks, comparisons and emulator performance. First we have a user manual and that's in the loosest term as it's literally an explanation of the Andel's layer and tech specs. Underneath is a screen protector which you can apply to your screen. We have the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus handheld which we will show in more detail shortly. And last but not least is a USB Type-C charge cable. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is available in several colours. Here we have the clear purple and clear blue models. It has the same case as the Retroid Pocket 3, measuring around 7.2 by 3.1 by 0.9 inches and weighing around 230 grams. It also shares the same 4.7 inch touchscreen with a rotated 750x1334 resolution. On the front are your usual gaming controls including clickable dual analog sticks, a d-pad and four gaming buttons. On the left side is a volume rock arm and the right as the home button. On the top are the left and right shoulder and trigger buttons with the power button and micro HDMI port in the middle. And as before we have the weirdly located select and start buttons which are not in a natural position to press while playing the game. On the bottom is a micro SD card slot, the USB Type-C port and a 3.5mm headphone port. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus has the Unisoc Tiger T618 Octa-Core processor which has two A75 processors and six A55 processors. It has the Mali G52 MC2 graphics processor running at 850MHz. There is 4GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 128GB of internal eMMC storage. You can add more storage via the micro SD card slot. There is a 4500 mAh battery which lasts for up to 8 hours depending on usage. We left the Antutu benchmark running on a loop for 4 hours 57 minutes which is a decent amount of time. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus runs on Android 11 and has a fair number of emulators ready to go. Generally they just need pointing to the respective ROM folders on a micro SD card. There is a built in front end which does admittedly take a while to set up from scratch but once you do have it set up it is very good. Another useful feature is the pocket overlay which you activate by swiping from the right side of the screen. It gives you quick access to commonly used functions system information and built-in screen mapping which is very good. The overlay software is a big positive and something we would like to see on future Ambonic devices. As with all Android based handhelds we run a series of system benchmarks to see their general performance and we can also use the results to compare to other handhelds. The Pocket 2 Plus and Pocket 3 shared the same processor so we saw fairly similar scores for them both. The Pocket 3 Plus scores an average 115% increase over the previous two models, which is very impressive. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus benchmark scores are on par with the Ambonic RG505, which does share the same processor. You could run the benchmarks on both handhelds again and get better or worse scores than each other. This, in my opinion, is good to see, as it means we could base which handheld to buy on the design, price or features, rather than which has the best performance. As with the RG505, the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus can run up to PlayStation 1 and Dreamcast games with full 60 FPS. This is a good increase compared to say the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus and 3 which struggled when we got to some Dreamcast and above. So let's see how much more performance we can get from the Pocket 3 Plus. Like the RG505, we see a mix of speed with the Dolphin emulator. On Burnout 2 we get the full 60 frames per second and quite a few other games run just as well. But for a fair number, including first party titles, the frames will drop to as low as 20 to 40 depending on which Dolphin emulator you're using. On EFA SX2 we are getting around 20 FPS on 1x resolution and 33 FPS on half resolution on Gran Turismo 3. 
The graphics quality at half resolution is pretty bad and the game is not very enjoyable. You will have more success with less demanding games like Neo Contra, which runs well at 1x resolution but more stable at half. On M64 Plus FX, we were getting full frame rates on all the games we tried. This includes third and first party titles which run at either 50 or 60 FPS, depending on the region. Everything was fine and we didn't have any issues. You will get mixed performance depending on the game you are trying whether or not it will be playable. Sonic Generations has uh, shared a cache lag the first time you play through the game but the second time it is more playable. Less demanding games will initially perform better and are playable. Overall the emulator runs well enough and it's definitely worth trying some games on it to see which works well or not. As always we check out God of War and like on the RG505 we are getting a mostly solid 60 FPS with no frame skipping at one times rendering resolution. Depending on how demanding the game is, you can increase the resolution higher and remain at 60fps. Overall, the PSP emulator is very good. Something I did want to mention is the very short space of time between releasing the Pocket 3 and Pocket 3 Plus. It is very disappointing, especially for those that purchased the Pocket 3. Retroid knew full well what they were doing. However, we are reviewing the Pocket 3 Plus on the actual product rather than the company's business practices, but it's something to keep in mind. Like the Ambernick RG505, I am very happy with the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. There's a good jump in performance over the usual handheld processors, such as those using the RK3566. The Tiger T618 does a very good job up until PS1 and Dreamcast era, and of course PSP. These are the systems you would be purchasing it for, rather than the Dolphin, Aether SX2 and Citra emulators which have mixed results, but on those you can still find some playable games. There is a nice range of colours for the Pocket 3 Plus, and I do like how well it feels in your hand, it's a great design. But I absolutely hate the location of the select and start buttons. It is not natural to have to move your hand to press either of the two standard gaming buttons. Other than that, I have no real complaints about the Pocket 3 Plus itself. As for which one you should buy, the Pocket 3 Plus or the RG505, I will leave that decision up to you. They do perform equally, so it does come down to the design, features, price difference etc. Talking about price, how does the discount on the Pocket 3 Plus sound? Use the discount code RP3P5OFF on the checkout at droix.co.uk or droix.net for international orders. Please take a moment to subscribe if you have not already as it keeps you up to date with our videos and helps grow this channel. That wraps up our Retroid Pocket 3 Plus review. We hope you have found it useful. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in the next video.